Thank you. Good morning. It's really a pleasure <clears throat> and an honor to be here today. I, I very much appreciate the kind introduction and the invitation to speak. And today I'll be speaking about exploring the path of physiologic links between psoriasis and heart disease. Uh, these are my disclosures related to the talk today. Okay, so I wanted to start the day with a clinical case to try to provide some uh, clinical translational interests in this topic. And this is someone who I think many of us may see in, in our practices, whether it's cardiology, rheumatology, or dermatology, or primary care. Uh, this is a 50-year-old male who feels well. He's mildly overweight. He does exercise. He's got mild hypertension, yet he's a non-diabetic, a non-smoker. He's got this metabolic like lipid profile with a slight reduction in his HDL and mild elevation as triglycerides. Yet despite that, he is not a diabetic nor a pre-diabetic, and his CRP is 1.5. So for this patient, his only real medical problem for him is plaque psoriasis. He's had it since the age of 35. While it was fairly extensive, involving over 10% of his body surface area, it cleared after starting targeted biologic therapy with an IL-17A inhibitor. And so this question, this patient comes with a few questions today, and this is gonna frame the outline of the talk. Is he at risk of a clinical cardiovascular event and how does psoriasis impact that risk? Why is he at elevated risk if he is? And what can he do to lower his risk? So right off the bat, we know this patient has an elevation in his traditional cardiometabolic risk factors. And as we know, this is very common in psoriasis. This is a summary slide detailing those associations where psoriasis patients have anywhere between a one and a half to threefold or higher odds of the traditional cardiometabolic risk factors when compared to non-psoriasis individuals, such as hypertension, obesity, diabetes, or metabolic syndrome, dyslipidemia, and smoking. Now, even after you adjust for those traditional cardiometabolic risk factors, psoriasis still associates with cardiovascular events. This is Joel Gelfand's original study, which most of us still quote today, where using a large UK prospective database, he showed that overall, patients with psoriasis have an approximately 50% increased risk of an MI when compared to controls. Now, there's also this dose-response relationship whereby those young patients with severe psoriasis seem to have the highest relative risk of a cardiovascular event. So why do we think this relationship occurs? Well, psoriasis is very pro-inflammatory. And systemic inflammation is linked with the development of atherosclerosis. So to back up, how do you get psoriasis? Well, you generally have this genetic predisposition. It's combined with environmental stimuli, and that generates a cascade of cytokines leading to dendritic cell activation. You get further cytokine production, such as TNF, IL-23, which drives T-cell differentiation at TH17 cells. And you get this feedback loop that develops, which eventually ends up in resulting keratinocyte hyperproliferation which also generates more cytokines. And you'll notice here that many of these cytokines, which are being produced, such as TNF, IL-6, or the IL-1 beta and alpha, or the S100s, they're not just pathogenic in psoriasis, but they're also felt to be causal in atherosclerosis. So then how does psoriasis directly relate to atherosclerosis? Well, a key step in the development of atherosclerosis is vascular endothelial damage. Endothelial cells are cells that line and protect the blood vessels, and they participate in many physiologic functions. So today, I wanted to present some of the data we've generated in collaboration with dermatologists across the U.S. to understand if endothelial damage is present in psoriasis, and if so, why, as a key first step in the initi initiation of atherosclerosis. So one way to explore this question is actually to start at the site of primary involvement, which is the skin. So these are skin biopsies. This is healthy control skin. The top is immunohistochemistry. The bottom is immunofluorescence. The green is the blood vessel. The red is inflammation. There's very little inflammation present in this blood vessel. This is non-legional skin. So, so you have a plaque in your abdomen. We biopsy your arm. First of all, the blood vessel is a little bigger. Now there's also more red, more inflammation surrounding that blood vessel and actually inside that blood vessel as well. Some yellow or cold localization. And now for comparison, this is lesional psoriatic skin biopsy. They're dense inflammatory infiltrates, a dilated and plump blood vessel. And vascular inflammation is present here as well, really highlighting how psoriasis is really a systemic process. 
But of course, as we know, the majority of cardiovascular events happen in the macrovasculature, not necessarily in the microvasculature. So one way you can explore the macrovasculature directly is to look at the vascular endothelial cells with a technique called vascular endothelial cell biopsy. To do this, you find the brachial vein, you put an angiocatheter into the vein. You then take a small wire, thread it through the angiocatheter and gently scrape out, isolate and analyze endothelial cells. When we do this and look at the inflammation, we see that endothelial cells from psoriasis plates are actually very much damaged. At the time mm -hmm. control, the bottom is a psoriasis patient. The green is the endothelial cells, the red is the inflammation. The more red going into the blue, the more inflammation is present. And you can see here both in the pictures and in the quantification that vascular endothelial damage is present in psoriasis patients. But extending beyond this non-specific inflammation, what are the actual mechanisms responsible for atherosclerosis? What are the endothelial cells producing or doing? These are a variety of genes we've looked at being produced from those endothelial cells, all causal in atherosclerosis. And when you look at controls compared to moderate and moderate to severe psoriasis, the majority of these genes are differentially expressed in psoriasis endothelial cells and a dose response relationship exists, whereby the greater the psoriasis, the greater the expression of these transcripts. So thus far, we've identified that yes, the vascular endothelium is inflamed and damaged in psoriasis patients, and we wanted to understand why. So one really understudied cell are platelets. Platelets we traditionally think are involved in hemostasis and thrombosis, but they're also implicated in atherosclerosis and atherothrombosis, the active MI process. We wanted to see if they had a role in psoriasis pathology. So to our surprise, platelets were actually present in psoriatic skin. This is a normal skin biopsy. There are no platelets present. Now this is immunohistochemistry and immunofluorescence you can actually see platelets clumping in the lesional psoriatic skin, and the green highlights this process by immunofluorescent studies, that platelets are present in skin of psoriasis lesions. Not only are these platelets present, they're also highly activated. Psoriasis platelets have higher platelet P-selectin expression. You can actually see a relationship between platelet P-selectin expression and IL-17A production. These platelets also clump or aggregate more with neutrophils and lymphocytes. These processes are all felt to be biomarkers and causal in atherogenesis. These psoriasis plates are not just activated, they also clump or aggregate more as well. As well. When you take psoriasis platelets and render the controls, and look at how quickly they aggregate to a variety of agonists, the platelets are not just activated, but also hyperaggregators in the psoriasis platelets. We also want to understand the implications of these findings in platelet activation and activation and aggregation. So we took psoriasis platelets and we put them on cultured endothelial cells. And if you go all the way to screen right, you'll see, first of all, these platelets from psoriasis platelets uh, patients, they adhere to the endothelial cells. They're also highly activated. They're actually cellular processes sticking out of these platelets. But then not just are they here and activated, they're also activated in the endothelial cells. You can actually see cellular processes sticking out of these endothelial cells as well. What are these psoriasis platelets doing to the endothelial cells? Well, these endothelial cells, after psoriasis platelet co-incubation, get highly angry and damaged. So they produce more IL-8, IL-1 beta, and COX-2 when compared to having platelets from healthy controls put on them. So when we start thinking about the factors that influence cardiovascular disease and psoriasis, it's clearly the combination of clinical variables. There's also pathophysiologic variables such as platelets, and there's also immune cell dysregulation. So as we've highlighted many times, psoriasis is a systemic inflammatory process. And one way you can try to explore this more deeply and how it relates to cardiovascular disease is by looking at the immune signature in psoriasis and how it associates with enhanced cardiovascular risk. For example, we performed whole blood RNA sequencing. So we looked at the gene signatures that are circulating in the psoriasis patients. They predominantly come from white blood cells. And we noted that almost 400 genes were higher in psoriasis whole blood than in controls. There is also a relationship of about 1,200 genes that relate directly to psoriasis skin severity. And when you look at the overlap between the two groups, about 73 genes were felt were significant in the psoriasis patients and in the controls. 
These 73 genes or transcripts circulating in the blood were produced from predominantly white blood cells, and they were regulated by many of the cytokines that have been shown over and over again to be upregulated in psoriasis, such as interferons, IL-4, TNF, inflammasome mediated ones such as osmin and IL-1 beta. But that's not all. Out of these 73 genes, 29 genes were present in patients who were having an active heart attack. So what I mean is the same process happening in patients with active psoriasis is actually happening in patients who are having an active MI. Now, out of these 29 genes and the patients that were having an active MI, they also predict and associate with future cardiovascular events. See, these are some of the biggest candidates here that we kind of pulled out from this process trying to figure out what is a unique cardiovascular signature in psoriasis that not just associates with the cardiovascular events, but could also have these mechanistic implications. So, of course, given the high cardiovascular immune signature in psoriasis and the circulating blood, one would expect that treating psoriasis reduces cardiovascular events. Uh, I'll let Drs. Gelfand and Stahl answer this, what I think, fairly complicated question in later slides. But as a preventive cardiologist, we wanted to focus on some different prevention strategies. So we had pretty good data that platelets were activated in psoriasis patients. And as we know, aspirin inhibits platelet activation and aggregation. It also is a commonly used prevention medication. So we wanted to explore if aspirin could be beneficial in psoriasis. We took psoriasis patients, we randomized them to aspirin, low dose, you no know, treatment. And we looked at their vascular endothelial transcriptome before and after these therapies. Now, these are relatively young psoriasis individuals, overweight to obese, uh, fairly controlled blood pressure, low cardiovascular risk, but all with very real psoriasis disease, on average between 13 and 20 years of psoriasis duration, and on average moderate severity at the time of enrollment. In those patients who were randomized to 81 milligrams of aspirin, they actually saw a reduction in their vascular endothelial inflammation uh, transcript expression, so actually improvement in vascular endothelial cell health when compared to the no treatment group. Now, we also measured thromboxane B2. So thromboxane B2 is a downstream metabolite from thromboxane A2. The greater the reductions in thromboxane B2, the more efficacious aspirin is we actually saw a direct relationship between reductions in thromboxane B2 and improvement in vascular endothelial inflammation, suggesting a connection between aspirin efficacy and vascular endothelial health. So as a preventive cardiologist, I'm also deeply interested in statins. So we did a similar clinical trial in statins in psoriasis. We took patients with psoriasis and we randomized them to 40 milligrams of atorvastatin or no treatment for two weeks. And we looked at the vascular endothelial transcriptome before and after. Similar to our aspirin clinical study, we saw a similar benefit with the torvastatin or Lipitor. You can see that after two weeks of 40 milligrams of atorvastatin, a significant reduction in the composite vascular endothelial transcriptome. When we started to look at the relationships, we noticed that the greater the reduction in LDL, so the greater the impact the statin had on LDL lowering, the greater the improvement in vascular endothelial health. This was actually in direct comparison to changes in CRP, where we really saw, even though we think that statins are anti-inflammatory and they have these pleiotropic properties, we did not see much of a relationship between degree of CRP reduction and improvement in vascular endothelial inflammation. So trying to come full circle, coming back to our patient, how do we approach him? Uh, I think, yes, he is at elevated cardiovascular risk. Um, I think this is a combination of traditional risk factors plus the independent contribution from immune cell activation. So you should aggressively manage his cardiovascular risk factors, which is blood pressure control, lipid control. We will talk about psoriatic disease treatment later. Uh, I think the aspirin uh, data is very exciting and interesting, but maybe not ready for prime time just yet. So thank you very much. There are a lot of people involved in these collaborative research projects, so I'd just like to point out some of them here in my sources of support.